So Antoine's going through one of his phases when he images Thor's helmet and he just gets so excited and, well, really just let me show you. What you doing? Oh. <laughs> so I know we already imaged uh, Thor's helmet last year, but um, this time I wanted to find another excuse to wear this awesome costume again, and most importantly, this awesome hair. <laughs> so um, today we're going to image Thor's helmet again, but with a twist this time. Uh, so I'm going to be using a uh, wide telescope here and with a full frame camera at the same time, which is going to give us a huge field of view. So what you got here, you got Audrey. I also have my 70 millimeter Mead Apo, which is named Audrey. <laughs> you have, let's see, the yeah, QHY. Yeah, QHY 600, 600 M. M. Um, ooh, the Pegasus first gen box, a USB hub. All right, and what are these? Oh, this is like a 3D printed uh, cable management thing. We'll have a full video about this um, very soon, but it's pretty cool, it's really useful, and also it matches my cape, so right. <laughs> perfect. Well, good luck with that. So we already have a beautiful picture of Thor's helmet, which... Wait, can you at least try to be in the spirit of the God of Thunder here? So, like I was saying, we already have a beautiful image of Thor's helmet, which we captured last year for episode 15 of Galactic Hunter. Please go watch it so it wasn't worth anything. It was such a pain to shoot. It was. But we don't have a picture of the Seagull Nebula yet. So about two years ago, I stumbled on a uh, picture on Flickr from uh, one of my favorite astrophotographers. His name is Raoul. And he took a picture of both Thor's helmet and the Seagull Nebula in one frame, uh, white field. Uh, so I'm really want to try, um, you know, just the same kind of framing to get both of them in there. And I love how you can compare both the size of the large seagull and the tiny Thor <laughs> in there. Framing your photos can also have a huge impact on your images. Our last image, for example, the Rosette Nebula, we frame just a little bit higher so that we can capture the fainter gases in the same frame. So, so far, this is the fifth night imaging uh, Thor's helmet and the Seagull Nebula. Those targets rise around 8 p.m. when they're high enough to be imaged, like around 30 degrees, and they go behind trees from our backyard around 1 a.m. So we only have five hours per night maximum on them. It's sad, but hopefully the end result will be worth it. It'll be super! <laughs> and maybe it's just enough to get us an A-pod this year. We spent a total of 10 nights imaging Thor's helmet and the Seagull Nebula. This is definitely a new record for us in terms of the number of individual nights spent on a single image. We had a few cloudy days in between, and near the end of our capture journey, the moon showed up to put a wrinkle in our plans. In that case, our best advice is to take as much O3 as possible when the moon is not present and use the S2 filter when the moon is partially present. That way, when the full moon hits, all you have left is the HA filter, which is the best at blocking moonlight and light pollution in general. Of course, it's always better to image when the moon is not visible, but this is a good tip to keep in mind if you don't have the patience to wait for the new moon every time. Okay, the tenth and last night is now complete. As you can see here, there's a frame with the trees. Uh, so that's usually uh, the four to five last frames we get every single night when the target goes behind the trees. So yeah, this is a wrap, guys. So I'm going to close everything and I'm going to finally process our data. All right, guys, so here we have a bunch of files. We have flat files, we have dark flats, we have darks and lights. Uh, look at how many HA I have and so many O3s in S2. Um, that's a lot of files right here, so it's probably going to take a long time. We have 136 HA files, 79 frames of O3, and 82 frames of S2, each being 10 minutes long. 
so that's going to be a, a fun time to process and, and stack a lot of Processing this target was both fun and frustrating. Dealing with bottle 9 silly light pollution gradients is a pain, but I think an aggressive approach with DBE fixes that problem well. Okay, so during the processing, um, O3 was definitely the hardest to work with. Uh, as you can see here, this is o, uh, HA, which is very clean overall, uh, followed by S2, which is also very clean. But O3, like we said earlier, is not really good at blocking all the light pollution. So even though we used the O3 filter on the best possible nights without the moon at all, uh, you can still see a bunch of, of vinyling from the uh, light pollution all around it. So. Uh, obviously, this is the most annoying and, and hardest uh, filter to work, uh, to work with um, from home. But uh, it's very important because if you look at O3 World Close compared to S2 and HA on this target, you can see that O3 is very dominant in Thor's helmet. But not only, it's also very dominant in this shock wave here. The shock wave uh, in the Seagull Nebula. So you can clearly see it here. Uh, if we compare it to the S2, up, oh, no shockwave at all. See here, it's completely invisible. Uh, Thor's helmet is also almost invisible in S2. And in HA, uh, Thor's helmet is of course good. And the shockwave appears as well. So um, O3 was definitely important to add to this, uh, to this image. So yeah, uh, a hard DBE um, was of course used to get rid of all this bad light pollution. Another pro tip, by the way, is really annoying to process for hours and hours and hours with a tight wig on my hair and uh, a very tight and not comfy co costume at all is not a good idea. So if you can avoid that, you should. Wow, Antoine, that was the best tip ever. No problem. Right, how about you show everybody your godlike processing now? Oh, sure. Let's show you guys the result of this image. So all in all, the picture is just so beautiful and amazing. I love it. The framing, um, the comparison of just the two together in the same frame, like mm. the size difference. Yeah, I think I, I love this image. It might even be my new favorite for now, I'm not sure. But after all these hours spent uh, to capture it, it was definitely worth it. I'm so in love with this picture and I think it turned out amazing. Uh, by the way, in those images, um, in some of my frames, well, I think just actually one or two frames, I had some weird uh, artifact going on in there, and I would like you to tell me what you think it is. I'm guessing it's a tumbling satellite, but it's strange because, as you can see here, um, like there's a, a huge line, and then there is like dots on the line, which mm -hmm. I'm guessing is a 
is tumbling, but then why is the line still straight, I'm not sure. And then at the same time, there's like the same thing, but without the line in parallel. It's so strange, so I'm not sure what's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it's like two tumblings are right in parallels, or if it's like one, two, I, I don't know. It's, it's so weird. It's too spooky. Yeah, it's spooky. Anyway, uh, so the image toll is about 50 hours because uh, I think we gathered, no, it's 61 hours. We gathered 50 hours in total of imaging. And then um, we used our old picture from last year of Thor's helmet uh, with the SVX 130. And I tried to paste it using uh, Photoshop, which by the way is fine because this is all our data, okay? It's not like from some other data or whatever. So I think right. it's fine. I used the Thor's helmet uh, up close, so with more uh, detail and uh, added it to the picture. So in total, it's 61 hours of exposure. And uh, yeah, hopefully this one will be good. Yeah, hopefully it's good enough because we submitted it to APOD again. So we'll see. I added so many uh, details and all that. It was super nice as, as usual. <laughs> I gave I gave them everything they needed, but hopefully. It's on Sky again, by the way, on Facebook Sky, which is NASA's uh, Facebook page about astrophotography and uh, it's always on sky. Our image of Orion, uh, I mean the Orion region, was on sky like six times. How many times? Which I think is like the, the record for how many how many times an image was Without featured an A-pod. On sky without an A-pod, yeah. Anyway, uh, that was pretty much it. But uh, one last thing, uh, we have this image, so Thor's helmet and the Seagull Nebula uh, image, and the image of the Rosette Nebula uh, available as prints if you want to. Uh, for a limited time, so it's going to be just for maybe a few days or a couple of weeks, I'm not sure yet. So if you guys want a, a print of that, you can. And uh, we'll see you next time, and let us know what you thought about this image. And, uh, Clear skies! Clear skies!